the last few episodes have been pretty strong. Even though Sally Spectacular Spreadsheet isn't entirely up to date, the estimated profits in our past four videos has been very nice. Can we make it five? in a row. That'll be interesting. In today's episode, I actually purchased a Nintendo Switch Lite that was faulty and previously worked on by a Twitch streamer, another content creator. This person is a hobbyist when it comes to repair, but let me tell you, their attempt at repair for their skill level was absolutely fantastic. They also sent me a bit of chocolate if I was able to actually fix it. I wasn't allowed to eat this if I couldn't fix it. So please sit back, relax, get your cuppa and enjoy episode number 28 of the series Profit or Loss. Before we jump in, a quick word from today's video sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is your website for DIY. Get an instant quote on your PCBs at a low cost with fast delivery. New customers will also get a $5 welcome bonus. Fully customize your PCB with a few clicks, including the thickness of the board to the color of the solder mask. PCBWay also offer services in CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and also injection molding. Head on over to the gift store and grab yourself a multimeter or a soldering iron. PCB Way has it all. Thank you to PCB Way for sponsoring today's video. Now back to the repair. I purchased this from another streamer. There was, a, there was another streamer who reached out to me and said, Joey, would you like to buy a Nintendo Switch Lite that I tried to fix on my stream? To which I said, Absolutely. The fix on his stream didn't go too well. He tried replacing a Nintendo Switch Lite charging port and actually ripped one of the traces underneath. He then said that the charging port was working one side, but not the other, I believe. And then all of a sudden it stopped working. He thinks it's got something to do with the FPC connector from the main board to the daughter board. I think I'm going to be able to show some of that on the stream now. I'm sure he'll be absolutely fine with that. What I will show you first is a note that he sent me. Hey, Joey, Tech Wizard. This is the Switch I Gibbs tried to fix and tore up a pad on the USB-C port area and then made it worse by breaking the latch off the FPC connector. Take to the back. Might be salvable with your wizard hands and telescopic powers. Hope it treats you and Sally well and I've provided a snack that I bought my mate's kids but it turned they turned it down and I'm gluten free so I pass it on to you for a victory snack. From smelly fish eating Gibbs PTO and I don't know what the stuff on the back is maybe nail varnish. I thought about acetone but wasn't sure about the plastic. Also, the two gig memory card was uh, that was in there when I got it. Little bonus, might be able to store Minesweeper on it at a push. So Kinder Bueno is in fact life. This is the port. And I think this is the one that he's taking off. I could be wrong. You can see that he's put flux on it. Now we've already had like a bit of uh, an email exchange back and forth as well as Discord, right? What Chris does here is he, he heats from the top, which is absolutely fine. You know, I know I know plenty of people who have heated from the top and that's their preferred method. But what I think I said, if I recall anyway, I think we discussed this, is he knows as well that I go from, I heat it from the bottom and then you avoid having to use tape, etc. So he's heated it from the top. He's added a bunch of flux because it wasn't coming off. I think he keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. I don't know if he's got it off just yet. I think he's adding leaded solder at this point to the actual USB-C port to try and get it off. And then he also, I think, just looks up some guides. But he's still trying to get it off from what I can tell, unless he's just put it on. Or maybe he's just put it on. Oh, no, there we go. He's not got a microscope as well, bear in mind. So doing this without a microscope is just so hard so the fact he's doing it with just with a normal camera is crazy i'm just trying to get to the point where it's actually taken it off so you can see i can't really see if he was like pulling the port too vigorously or anything because the hand's just in the way at the moment so i can't really tell i'm assuming so with a bit of force i don't know also if this is the first port that's been changed on this device or whether somebody else has changed it and then he's he's tried to he said that it works so he's plugged it in we can see in the top here that it is actually charging so he's done a great job there that nintendo switch like charges but i think what he was saying is that it now doesn't and it doesn't work um, he's also talking about the connector here, the FPC connector. So this is the FPC connect. Oh, this is somebody else doing it. I think he's watching a video on, on trying to do it. There we go. He's trying to put it on, look, which again, I can't do. I can't put the clasp back on. So the only option really is to, is to look at, is to look at soldering it, resoldering a new connector, which we can do. No problem. There we go. He's giving us a close up. Yeah. So I've got this console and I'm ready. Looking at it, might need to replace the analog sticks. We'll see how we get on. Uh, one of them looks, looks a tiny weeny bit bowed. I don't know if you can really see. Just up here, looks a tiny little bit bowed. I'm not going to try and power it on. I'm not going to plug in USB-C because we know what the issue is with this. So I know I need to go straight into it, really. But yeah, in terms of the actual port, I'm looking forward to having a look. Should we have a look at the port under the scope now before we before we dive in? See what see what it looks like. Yeah, great job. Look, you can even see like again credit credit to Chris. Okay, gives because there's not much flux in that port at all. He's done super well putting that port on. Really, really, really good job. Considering as well, this isn't something. This is something he does as a hobby. That's I mean, some of the professional jobs that I've seen of people with shops doing work on ports, crazy. Obviously, 
I'm not down to the bare bones of this yet, so I can't see the soldering aspect. But in terms of looking at this port, it looks pretty good. New glove day soon? Never. Let's go ahead then and take this apart. I've got an M92T36 in my LTT screwdriver case. Who put that there? Did it come preloaded with it or something? He said about acetone. Where's the acetone? Can't really see. Unless he's talking about this stuff. Oh, maybe he was talking about him using acetone to get it off and he'd be worried. He thinks it's nail polish. So let me just use some isopropyl alcohol. Well, I don't even know what that is. It's like thermal paste, but it's not thermal paste. And if I scrub too hard, it will affect the plastic with the IPA. So I do need to be careful. We've got the clasp included, but we're not going to worry about any of that for obvious reasons. You guys know exactly how I'm about to deal with this. So I will take this off because the way we do it is we replace the whole connector. If I can fix it, we'll be looking at a nice, nice little profit here. Oh, wait a minute. Mafty. <laughs> yeah, boy. Use our Nintendo Switch Lite taking apart tool, which I can just balance this on now and not have to like worry about it wiggling about and all those sorts of things. So big shout out to Mafty. Thank you, Mafty. Take out the SD card. Oh, did he include the SD card? Yeah, he did. We've got two gigs on here and then I've taken the ones out of the top as well, right? Yeah. So all we, all we got to do now is just hopefully take the case off like normal. I'm looking forward to seeing the inside of this. You know what? I can't believe I'm about to say this. He is he has done a better job at reassembling this than 50% of the professional repair shops that I've seen do before. At Rocket, we used to have a lot of people come in saying, oh, I took this somewhere and uh, and this is the state of it now. And it would, trust me, screws missing, bits of, uh, bits of metal housing destroyed. And he's put this back together very well. Again, considering hobbyist. Okay, so that's come off, which is exactly why it's not working. Can you see? So this has just come out of the chassis, out of the, uh, out of the FPC connector, sorry. But again, the, the board is very clean. I'm looking at this port and it looks pretty good. So let's continue taking it apart and disassembling. I'm about to do a Steve and ask, has he done the correct amount of thermal paste? What do you guys think? I can still put this on here, can't I? Because I can use it even with the back off. Yeah. What do you think the thermal paste application standard is going to be like? Good. You know what? Good. I'd say. Definitely. It looks like an MX4 sort of situation we got going on. Jubbly. I don't know if Gibbs is going to be watching this. I, I'm going to go ahead and assume so because I think he said it'll be cool to... Uh, see what tips and tricks and stuff I use, but he's done a super good job so far. And uh, a lot of people won't understand how difficult this actually is until they give it a go themselves. Just cleaning up some of the uh, thermal paste we have because we'll need to go ahead and apply some new stuff. He's put everything back together. The, the screws are hand tightened, so they feel really, really nicely in here. Not too tight, not too loose. He's still got the water indicator sticker on here, <laughs> which is I like, I can never keep that on. <laughs> I can never keep that on. Is this cable? No, it's not. The cable isn't trapped. Again, top, top points. The battery's been disconnected as well. Okay, I think he's taken this stuff out. I think he's... Because that battery won't just disconnect randomly. So I think um, Gibbs has actually prepared us this Nintendo Switch Lite because he's tried to open it again and gone. Nope. So Gibbs is actually a... Uh, he's a Twitch streamer. So he plays games. So incredibly difficult when you're a, uh, a hobbyist as well. Let's go onto the scope and inspect the board. Jerry is not a pro. Right, here we go. How are we looking? Let's zoom out a little bit. Right, first inspections. I'm not going to slate his work. That's not what I'm here to do. Um, more so just to hopefully give some advice and tips on what I think potentially could be done better to help him with any future endeavors when it comes to repairing, right? That's what this community is all about. What I would say is we mentioned about that he done it from the top. The reason I think this class got the way it is and maybe came off potentially is because of the fact that he was using the Kapton tape over here when he was applying heat flux and goo has allowed itself to get into the connector, which makes it kind of slippery. In which case, when you're then playing about with the connector, it can easily come out. So I think that's probably the first thing. Um, the battery connector, pretty much untouched. So it's okay. There's a little bit of singe plastic just here, but again, fine. And we have solder. Again, looking at this from a hobbyist perspective is absolutely unbelievable, by the way. He's done such a good job. And the fact is, remember, this did work. This did work originally. The solder here, if I was to replace a Nintendo Switch Lite charging port, I would like the solder to go through here and up the legs and round. This is just kind of sat at the top of the port, but it's very difficult to achieve if you do not have the right equipment, which again, I think Gibbs only has a more so a, a beginner setup, right? Same situation on this side here, but the plastic at the top isn't burnt. And I think, like I said, he done it from the top because we got a little bit of singe plastic here. The flux is minimal. So great job on not using too much flux here. As far as I'm concerned, looks really, really good. And if we look at the pins on the actual port, I think the port itself is in a perfectly placed location, by the way. The pins themselves, look at this. Guys, this is unbelievable. Absolutely amazing. Little bit of a wobble in this one. But again, it did work and I don't think the charging port was the problem. The problem is this connector because if this connector isn't attached to the daughter board, uh, via the FPC cable, the console won't turn on because you get the backlight rimming cable feeding through the door to board. If that's not connected, it's not going to turn on the console, is it? And if we turn it over on the back, I mean, a little bit of flux. 
which I can see. But again, you can't help that on most of the occasions. And because he didn't heat from the bottom, we haven't got cinched plastic here. Fuse is intact. This cap is still here. And look, there isn't too much solder in here. He hasn't put, he hasn't overloaded the solder. Again, really good job for the amount of solder he's got. I just think, I don't know. I'm just trying to think how he could potentially get around this blob being on top. And I think it's just going to be heat dissipation. The port needs to get as hot as what the board does for the solder to be able to flow through. And one thing I did notice on Gibbs' video or Gibbs' live stream, I think, is that maybe he was a little bit too stagnant with the hot air. So what I would say is that if you're a newbie or if you're somebody who's trying to get into this, try and maybe practice by just rotating your hot air gun. He didn't have a scope. He did an amazing job. Factually true. So what we're going to look at first is replacing the port because like Gibbs said, there is a, uh, a trace missing underneath. So let's do that. Two birds, one stone here. First things first, remove the port. And then I'll also just slide it over and we'll remove this. And remember, I'm using an Atten ST862D. I'm going to go 450 degrees Celsius with an airflow speed of 50%. Okay. So I'm just rotating the heat underneath the hot air gun, rotating it underneath the board. 450 degrees Celsius, 50% airflow. This is always going to change depending on what hot air gun station that you have. Could be different. Can we see the flux just pouring out from the back now? Rotating that air because I don't want to keep it stagnant. That's how you can burn the board, destroy components. We'll just be nice and patient here. I also don't know what solder he's used, actually. I'm going to give it a little tap, see if it's loose. It is, look at that. It's loose already, perfect. And then we'll come through here and just lift it off. There we go. Now we can see the torn trace. The solder that he has used, I think is actually pretty good, to be honest. I don't think I need to go ahead and replace that. I will add to it, however. But I don't think I need to replace it. So again, I'm going to come in with some flux. This is Siri HTTF. So let's just place some of this on. I'm just going to add some solder into these holes, just a tiny bit more. And then we can clean up if, if needs be. So this is now hot. So I'll come in and just add some solder to the ground holes. Just being as careful as possible because I don't want to put any on the battery connector. This one at the back needed a tiny bit more. And we'll just go over these. Nice. Now again, cotton swab. Just clean this up. And this flux, again, is really nice and easy to clean when it's hot. Like any flux, really, to be honest. Wait, is that ground? Hold on. <laughs> it might be ground. I'll double check in a second. Let me just remove the other connector. So we're going to remove this one now as well. So again, exactly the same technique. 450 degrees, 50% airflow. Could go high on the airflow if we wanted to, but just rotate the heat. Rotate the heat. And it can be difficult to get used to. Still not metal just yet. Now, what I can do is add some flux here. And the reason I can add some flux is purely because of the fact... I'm taking this off. If I was putting a connector on, I wouldn't use that much flux. Just go ahead and pop it off. There we go. Connector be gone. So we've removed the connector now. Then what we're going to do is just add some flux. And go ahead and add some leaded to these joints. And now we'll clean this area. Give it a little tilt. How does it look? Yeah, nice. Look at that. Cool. Happy with that. Port's ready to go as well. This <laughs> my naked thumb. All right. Let's go ahead and check and see if this is a ground pad. I think it is, guys. Yeah. Look, it's a ground pad. So I was looking. Uh, I was looking at doing a trace repair here, but I don't need to. <laughs> this one here just doesn't have much solder on. It's connected to ground. But we've got we, we've got enough ground points here. One here. One here. Obviously, the one here that's ripped, and one here that we don't have to worry about this ground pad. If this was the only ground pad, and we still had the ground connections on here for the legs of the port. Even if we had good ground connections up here, I'm sure we should have at least one ground connection on the bottom row for it to function correctly. That could be wrong. I've just added a drop of flux here as well. Just to put a little bit of solder on the uh, on that end pad. All four outer ground pins need to be there. Oh, okay. Interesting, Dreams. Okay, so that's ready to go. And we can just, uh, we can just replace the connector here. So I'm going to get a donor connector now. Just make sure we're okay. Yeah, that's perfect. So I'm gonna, gonna gonna take this one and we'll use that on the one that we're working on now. Always as well, I like to tin my ports. Too much flux, but this is a uh, this is a brand new tube, so a lot of flux comes out at the end. There we go. Nice. I'll do the connector first. So again, we put a dash of flux just here. Not too much on the connector because we don't want too much flux going inside the connector when we put it on. So we just use just the right amount of flux. Which is probably about that. And we can give the connector a nice clean after as well. Okay. So I'll just put that. Uh, do you know what? That's a perfect landing, by the way. I didn't. <laughs> I 
that was a complete accident as well. I've just dumped that on there. I'll never, I'll never be able to do that again. So what I do now is heat from the bottom. Um, this is actually pretty well in line. I might have to move it a tiny bit south. There we go. That should be okay. And again, we just heat from the bottom. Now, see how it's going a little bit lopsided now? So I'm going to come in and tap it. And just get it, it back in place. There we go. And we should see it settle in a second. Hopefully. There we go. See it move? I'm not doing anything now. I'm not touching it with tweezers, nothing like that. I'm just circling the heat underneath. And look how surface tension does the job for me. I don't need to. Good flux will allow that. And good solder as well. Looks okay to me. Come off the heat now. And clean pretty much straight away. Just don't do it too quick where it can still come off. There we go. And then before we finish up, we're going to do the charging port. I'll come back to check the connector in a minute, but I actually think it's okay in this scenario. That's going to wobble a little bit, so I'm just going to move it and move the scope. Right, so I've just added flux there as well. Exactly the same procedure. I'll go from underneath though, yeah? So here we go. So I'm going to grab the port. And again, I'm just rotating the heat. I'm using a big nozzle here to get as much surface area as I can. That's very important as well on your hot air gun when you're doing a, a port. You want to use quite a big nozzle. For bigger, sur bigger surface area. Wait for all that solder to melt. Which you can see now it's liquefied. Come in. Drop the port on. Keep rotating. Do not keep it stagnant at this point. You keep it stagnant at this point. That's when you burn the uh, burn the plastic. Keep rotating. I'm actually going to shimmy mine about a little bit. Now to me it doesn't really seem like this one's sticking flat. It looks like there might be something that's obstructing it sitting flat to the board. But I could be wrong. So I'm just going to push down come off the heat ever so slightly i'm not putting much pressure here just enough and that'll come with the experience too much you can actually warp the board there we go and now take it out of the bracket and clean you go straight with the cotton swabs whilst the flux is nice and warm and that is looking pretty good look at this no clean flux by the way considering that i've just attacked it whilst it's uh nice and warm and how it hasn't gone everywhere you know bottom's fine as well we've got a little mountain here but that's okay no dramas little bit of uh, melted plastic at the at the back of the port you see that let's just inspect these pins like i said it didn't really feel like the port sat flat but sometimes you could be wrong so as long as these are solid let's check all good and let's check our connector solid look at that all those solder connections are very nice on that connector can you see jubbly check the other side clasp is up every single one connected really good really happy with that there we go. 08 and 17, which I think is correct. Yeah, 08 and 17 show is red on the tester. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, all we should have to do is reassemble. I'm probably not going to do a better job than uh, than Gib at this point in terms of reassembling. But let's get it back in the chassis and see if it works. I did say I might have to replace one of the analogs, right? So which one? I might as well replace both, if I'm honest. Because otherwise they're going to look uneven. I've changed that one analog stick. Obviously, we need to change the other one as well. Do we at least get something on the screen? Here we go. Three, two, one. I think my arm needs plugged in the wrong way. <laughs> false alarm, false alarm. Here we go. Oh, you guys aren't even going to see it now. Oh, hold on. There we go. <laughs> Good stuff. And it's going to turn on. It's just reset. You can't see the arm meter now, though, because I've unplugged it. and plugged it back in. GG. There we go. Sweet. Let me see if I can launch the arm meter again. There we go. So you can see it's it's charging at 600, um, 600 milliamps. Perfect. If I take this out and turn it around... We also get charge. So it now works both ways. Great success. We've done it. I just now need to replace the other thumbstick. I'm starting to come down with a little bit of a cold, so please bear with me. But that is that Nintendo Switch Lite fixed. Now let's move on to Sally's Spectacular Spreadsheet. Episode number 28, Nintendo Switch Lite, as we can see here, cost was £30. I paid £1 for the charging port, and I think I'll be able to get £90 for this Nintendo Switch Lite, which means that we make a profit in today's video of £50.90. Oh, sorry, if I put postage, £46.91p. Hours worked, if I'm realistic, it took me about an hour to do that work. 
I don't have any updates on the previous episodes just yet, but hopefully by next episode we do. Pause. I actually forgot to add another two pounds for the analog sticks replacement. So that's going to be three pounds in total. Estimated profit was actually 44.91. Sorted. If you want to check out Gibson Pieces, which is the streamer that I purchased this Nintendo Switch Lite from, head over to a link down below in the description. And please tell him that for a hobbyist, he done a great job. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And as always, I shall see you in the next one. Peace.